Well, we have received a ton of questions, and I'm sure this is no surprise to you, about something that just recently happened, and in the last couple of days we've received a ton of emails and even some tweets asking about recent comments that Jim Ross made about, I guess the best way to put it is the style of wrestling some wrestlers in AEW yeah. utilize. Yes, yes, and this and this was actually this was on Twitter over the past couple of days, and I have been getting up in the morning and checking the Twitter machine and saw this, and even and I responded or didn't respond, but commented on it. But go go ahead and read the the question from the listener. Uh, well, we got several questions, so I'll just sum them up and say that the questions are about what Jim Ross said, what your thoughts are about that, and some questions were specific to. The responses, because there was a response from a anonymous AEW wrestler, as well as one from Brandon Cutler, which we'll get to in a moment. But let me, for the listeners out there who are unaware of what Jim Ross said, this was the quote, I guess it was in a recent interview. Jim Ross was talking about how finishers are not protected anymore, and he said, that evolution of the business is bullshit. Yes, they should be protected. The DDT is a finish. The super kick is just a part of the flow of the match now. Nobody wins with it. What does that say to you? Does that say guys back in the day were more proficient delivering a DDT or a super kick than in this generation where things are evolving? And that's in quotes there. I want some proof of that shit. I want somebody to prove to me that the changing of the wrestling business is what it is today and it's making a difference. I say no. I told a kid the other day at AEW that everybody does the same fucking spot. All you guys go outside, you cluster up like coils, you stand there... No, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you there, because I listened to the, to the JR making this statement, the, the audio of this. And apparently there's not a lot of ornithologists out in the audience. (laughs) Because he didn't say they cluster up like coils. He said they cluster up like quail, like a bunch of little birds, like quail. They cluster, because quail cluster up in a big bunch, a covey of quail. And then go ahead, but it's not coils. And, and But the wrestlers and, and apparently some of the news sites that have transcribed this are not up on their, their uh, Audubon Society handiwork there. Go ahead. You cluster up like quails. You stand there in a huddle. Friends and foes together, side by side, so you can catch some leaping idiot going over the top who never wins with this move. They are looking for the holy shit chant. They love to hear this is awesome. It's a spot, folks. It's a trapeze act. I don't buy into that. The DDT is a great finish and should be used as such. So before we even talk about any of the responses to Jim Ross... What are your thoughts? I mean, it doesn't sound radically different than what you say here on the show, does it? No, there wasn't as many F words um, content wise. And it's not like that, my God, that we are saying that suddenly Jim Ross and Jim Cornette, that either one of us are saying that we have suddenly hit an epiphany, that this is brilliant knowledge that we are sharing, that we are still, we are stating the obvious. We are stating the bald-faced fact whether i am more unsavory in my delivery and and jr is more uh, low key and 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 or just basically uh, uh what's the word i'm searching for more uh, less insulting about it but is at the same gobsmacked why that this is like saying water is wet and it's dark at night for anybody that knows anything about the profession, industry, sport, endeavor, line of entertainment, whatever you want to call wrestling, it's not hard to figure out if you accept when when you are one of the people who have gotten into wrestling with the thought of changing it, evolving it. JR and I were of a generation, of multiple generations, that we got into the wrestling industry because it intrigued us, interested us, fascinated us. We were fans of it. 
how whatever the description may be, the way that a, a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people get into business is by being intrigued by some part, wanting to be part of that. Who gets into something that they want to allegedly, allegedly want to be a part of and then proceed to shit on half of the things that it take, takes to make that thing up? Well, now that I got in here, oh, wait a minute, shit. This is harder than it looks because I can't really do this shit convincingly, but I've, you know, spent a long time playing on my trampoline when I was a kid so I can do a lot of cool flips and I don't look like a badass. I can't intimidate anybody, but I can dive and shit and, you know, and I don't actually have a personality or I'm not able to speak on television extemporaneously and in such a way that my personal magnetism makes people want to see me and buy into my shit, but I can fucking hop around and talk about how the little niche audience that I do draw with my performances gets me seven stars. That's the thing is you don't get into something because you want to be a part of it and then turn around and say, well, shit, I don't have many of the tools that it takes to be successful in this. So I'll just ass off and do some shit that I can do that gets me over, but doesn't really make any sense in the context of what we're trying to do. But back to the original topic. No, I'm not surprised JR said that because he's trying to smarten these guys up. And apparently it's, it's not that easy to do because not only will I'm sure no one take that advice, but as you mentioned, uh, one of the, the, one of the boys on the roster of all friends wrestling, what was his name? Br Brandon Cutlet. Brandon Cutler. I thought it was Cutlet. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Let me get to. It is absolutely Brandon Cutler. It's well, hold on here. What do you get? American, American heritage dictionary. Cutlet. <laughs> Cutlet. Nondescript piece of white meat. Bland. <laughs> yeah, it's Brandon Cutlet. Maybe it is Brandon Cutlet. Now that you yeah. say that. Yeah. So this fucking wiseacre, this uh, this fella apparently takes issue because he's actually, he's the guy that went to school with the Young Bucks, right? Not even high school, like middle school. He is legitimately a guy that's only there. We joke about all friends wrestling and everyone always hires their friends. In a lot of cases, they hire friends who are doing things in wrestling. This guy is legitimately only there because he's friends with the Young Bucks. And That's he it. and he admitted in an interview. I, I don't want to be wrong here. Was it high school or middle school? I believe it was middle school. Oh, I don't know. I always picture the young bucks as homeschooled guys, so it's hard for well, me to imagine them <laughs> in a school hallway. Actually, they're they're the they're the only students in the history of Rancho Cucamonga that the fucking school asked their parents to homeschool them. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, school friend Brandon Cutler, Cutlet, whatever. Piccata, Marsala, whatever. You say tomato, I say whatever. Anyway, this fucking clown was signed to this company as, to, to wrestle, and, and we've seen him a couple of times, right? There wasn't even one of the battle royals or whatever. They can't put him on television. He's never actually been on the real television program. But he was in one of the battle royals, something they did, and and he also, I think they, they have him running around back with a camera. It's like, you know, it, it's almost like he's, the, you know, the slow son of, of some money mark is they give him some task to perform. But anyway. He's a young buck stooge. I mean, to use yeah. a classic wrestling term for why he's there and why he has a job and why he's piping in here. He is the young buck stooge. Yeah, well, see, they can't say that. They can't say what he's what we're about to say that old Brandon Cutlet said. They can't say that because then that would get heat because they're knocking right. the greatest announcer in wrestling and. And they're the executive vice presidents, and he's also probably the highest paid guy on their roster. JR, I'm talking about. Uh, so they can so they get their stooge to say it. But this little weasel who apparently now is getting a chance to be on television, real TV Pinocchio, has to be the one to fire back at JR for giving these guys some certainly constructive and valid criticism and basically just saying what everybody with a lick of sense thinks when they do this shit over and over and over. And he said, what did it, what, what was it? He said there, Brian, 
I have it right here. I'm on his Twitter page. It appears that the last time we saw him, he was just, like you said, a generic white guy. It appears now he has stolen the look from the video game series God of War. He's dressed... <laughs> I could be wrong. He looks like Kratos yeah. from God of War. But here's his I'm tweet. I'm starting to worry about you that you know who these people are. Hey, man, there are good games out there. You're not going to shit on all video games or all video oh, gamers. Oh, oh goddamn. Boy, There's a difference like... between a great Brian Last and a Kenny Omega when it comes to people who play video okay, games. Okay, quick draw McGraw. That was goddamn that fastest gun in the West on that. Hey, there's good video games. There fans. are. You play your Tetris. Well, okay, but I'm not dressing up like a goddamn like fucking... Like a Tetris. Uh, <laughs> like a Tetris, like a block or what. I'm not putting myself in a box and making it my picture on Twitter like this clown. But anyway, another fucking video game character in a wrestling well, business. Again, I don't know oh, for wow, sure. How revolutionary. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying... business, acting like a video game <laughs> character. That's cutting edge. I'm just saying he looks like the character Kratos from God of War now, although much, much skinnier. But here's his well, tweet. I'm, I'm just saying he looks probably looks like 10 pounds of shit in a five-pound bag is what he probably looks like these days. This Wednesday on hashtag AEW Dynamite, seven versus seven. We're going to go outside, cluster up like coils, stand <laughs> there in a huddle, friends and foes together, side by side to catch some leaping idiot going over the top. Can't wait, 8 p.m. TNT. Hopefully, for one million viewers, let's effing go. And of course, there's also an image here of this match. Jesus Christ. <laughs> for Dynamite this week, it is the inner circle comprised of Chris Jericho, MJF, Sammy Guevara, Ortiz, Santana, Jake Hager, and Wardlow against a team of best friends, varsity blondes, <laughs> top flight, and the aforementioned Brandon Cutler. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? I mean, they would need five Rand McNally road atlases and a GPS to be able to figure out that match. This, is this a live episode, by the way? We're going to get we're going to give them their million. I got news for you, by the way, Brandon Cutlet. At one point uh, in, in this program, a million people might be watching this show, but not while you're on it, Skippy. But we might we might pitch him a million because this is promotion. Is this going to be live? If this is live, I cannot wait to see the clusterfuck of all clusterfucks of epic proportions <laughs> at a 14-man tag team match involving these dipshits. Is this going to be live or do they have a chance to fix this before we see it? Uh, it doesn't indicate it here. I thought this was a live week coming up, but I'm not. So, if this is a live week, this could be the greatest match in the history of AEW. <laughs> because, I mean, this is going to look like a monkey fucking a football. This will be the biggest four finger stinker in the history of goddamn all of wrestling. Uh, so I can't wait. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that this little Jack, can you imagine the withering glance? Actually, I was going to say, can you imagine the withering glance that Jim Ross is going to give his clown when he shows up to work Wednesday night? But I'm not sure that Jim Ross knows what this guy looks like. Well, you know, I was about to say, it doesn't say anything here about elimination match. It appears to just be a straight seven versus seven. Yes, that's even, even better. They all got to be in there the whole way. And well, you know it's going to last 20 minutes because they can't help it. What I was going to say is best friends are favorites of Tony Khan. We saw Varsity Blondes this past week show some potential. Top Flight also showed potential, just recently came in. I'm going to guess maybe Brandon Cutler is doing the job. He's the <laughs> only guy that no one cares about on an entire team. Well, he's also going to find out that he just, the first time he gets a chance to show his little fucking white ass on television, he's just pissed off the announcer that might have actually, well, I was going to say might have actually gotten him over, but once again, JR is the greatest announcer in wrestling, but he's not Merlin Magician. You couldn't get this guy over with fucking a 10,000 pound tank of helium. But this is the kind of little smart asses that they let in it. Can you imagine if he, if I, even going into Mid-South Wrestling, a little rookie manager, had said something smart-ass about Jim Ross at that point when he was Bill Watts's hired announcer? Watts would have, he, he might have done the angle with me and punched me instead of slapped me and give me brain damage. Uh, or he might have just kicked me out of the fucking locker room. But th these little fucking jack-offs and their little treehouse schoolboy click that they've got going that when they when people that obviously obviously know more about 
the business that they're in than they do, whether they want to admit it or not, whether they can grasp it in their little pea brains. And these people tell them, hey, you dumb shit, this is what most people think when they see you do this or say this or, or react that way or whatever. And that's why that we're fucking turning cartwheels and blowing kisses in the air when we get a million viewers, the same thing that one of the three programs that TBS used to air every week 30 years ago, the same viewership it got when it was delayed till midnight on Friday night by the Atlanta Braves. But they don't want to listen to that shit. Because it part of the taking on board that knowledge it has to be them realizing, shit, I really don't fucking belong in this goddamn business to begin with. And they don't want to hear that. But fuck, when I was a kid, the you know, Brian, I've never been a real sports fan. I loved wrestling and roller derby when I was a kid. But the one real sport that I have been interested in and that I will get excited about and watch on purpose and and even have bet on in the past, especially with Ric Flair, and just get emotionally invested in is basketball. Not because I like to just watch anybody play basketball. When I was a kid, of course, when I was six and I could go see the Harlem Globetrotters in person, well, that was great. But then we also had an ABA team here. Uh, and I got to see an ABA game when I was like six before they folded up. Outlaw basketball. Imagine that. I love the red and white and blue uh, basketball they used. Used to play with one in my driveway. I just I, I was predisposed to like basketball, but I only watched the Harlem Globetrotters once every couple of years when we go live. And boy, it was nice once a year they'd do the thing on Wide World of Sports, and you'd see some of the same spots. And you pretty much knew what was going on anyway with the Globetrotters, even when you were six or seven. But the ABA, the Kentucky Colonels, and then later on, a University of Louisville Cardinals, college basketball, that's what I started watching not only because it was real, but because I had somebody to root for. I had some emotional investment in it. Hey, our guys, the Louisville Cardinals, especially with the, the 1980 season, with Daryl Griffith and the Doctors of Dunk, they get national publicity. They're in the tournament. It's on NBC. They got the cool theme music. This is it. Kenny Loggins, blah, blah, blah. These guys are on the front page of the newspaper here in town. There uh, To this day, Daryl Griffith's picture is on seven stories of a building on the way to downtown on the Waterson Expressway. So that's, you've got somebody to root for. I didn't want to watch Michigan play Indiana because I don't give a fuck. You have somebody to root for and it means something. And then every game means something. And then the tournament means something. Winning the title means something. It's the same principle as wrestling. That's why all the local heroes in wrestling were so prized and highly paid and valued because you need a local hero in every territory. And once you've got one, then you can feed him some heels and the people are invested in what's going on. It's not going to see the Harlem Globetrotters do those funny spots once or twice a year. It's watching the University of Louisville Cardinals get a winning season, get a winning record, go into the fucking tournament, go into the fucking NCAA. Are they going to win the big one? That's our guy. Is he going to win the world title? Jerry Lawler here in Memphis, Dusty Rhodes in the Omni. It's the same fucking principle. And nobody, I know that there's people who will just watch every basketball game or every football game or every whatever, but to get big crowds, I think everybody will agree there's always got to be the team you're following, your hometown favorite or your team or your the fucking uh, it, 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 even if it's even if it's not uh, Brian, you like the New York match. You live in New Jersey. It's the same for your region. You see where I'm going with this. Your guy, America's team. That's the important thing. That's what wrestling used to be. People wanted to get into it to be that and to be part of that, not to go around and tickle a bunch of people that came and bring their kids to laugh at you once a year. And nobody is going for the investment of being the hero that the people want to see take that long road to the tournament or to the championship or to the victory. They just want to be a bunch of goofs tickling their friends and doing the bucket of confetti spot 
or fucking hiding the basketball underneath Curly Neal's fucking jersey. Your thoughts? Well, I will say I'm looking into things right now, and it appears that a, you mentioned you saw Brandon Cutler with a camera. In fact, he is the guy who films most of the Young Bucks comedy show. That's what I'm saying. BTE. I didn't realize that. He's the guy behind the camera for their right-wing brand of comedy. We do have another quote here. No, they they don't even have a right-wing brand. Hey, let me tell you something. Dick Cheney is a hilarious motherfucker like Chris Rock next to the Young Bucks. <laughs> they don't have a right-wing comedy. They are right-wing fanatics, them and their whole family, but they don't. They just have a bad comedy show because they don't want people to know that. I have a somebody. Somebody told me they're, they're like they have a sister that's like just a Trump nut on Facebook, just a lunatic. Her whole family just nutty and with the red hats and the fucking patriotic 1776 shit. One of them playing a fife and the other one with a drum. You know, we always say this. All those people who think that AEW is all inclusive. I wonder how many of them realize that everyone in management and the top stars are all. MAGA guys. They're all major <laughs> Trump guys. In some cases, the cons major Trump financial supporters. They gave what a million dollars to the inauguration. Trumpers, birthers, and flat earthers is what we got going on over there. And they're and and and, and we're the fucking horrible people over here. Well, I have a quote here. This is from an article. Uh the website is wrestlingnews.co. The author is Paul Davis. It's regarding this whole Jim Ross Wait a minute. Wasn't he the guy that sang I Go Crazy? I don't think it's the same Paul Davis. I go crazy when I look at your wrestling. I go crazy. <laughs> one wrestler. <laughs> okay. One wrestler gave them the following statement on Ross's comments that not attach his name, so there's no attribution here. Look, I know there is a lot that Jim Ross can teach us. But burying us on the show or on his podcast is only going to make some of us ignore what he says. I grew up watching JR, and he is the best, and we love it that he calls our matches. But maybe find a different way to criticize the wrestlers in the ring. Everyone is doing what they have been taught. I agree. What's the that, fuck? I agree that sometimes things need to be slowed down, but that won't happen when the guy who is supposed to help put us over is going out there and publicly burying us. Well, but you're missing the point is that JR didn't just come out with this on the show saying, yeah, boy, I feel like many times I've felt like telling these guys and then say it. He said, I told these guys. You think that's the first time JR's been there for a year? Do you think that's the first time he has shared that pearl of wisdom? The most obvious thing of all of the obvious things that's wrong with the show the matches the 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 work the style the the whole nine yards of all the obvious things that we call attention to every week that's that's the white whale right there that's the big one you think that's the first time he said it has anybody quit there's more of them haven't we do we joke every week and then they did the dive because there is literally They've got guys that are six feet, six and 300 pounds. They're doing dives. There's a dive or multiple dives in every match and on every show. And there has been for a year. So you, what about JR has been saying this to these guys and finally he's sick of them fucking ignoring him because it's fucking continues to be as stupid as it was the first time you saw it. Well, to me, it's not even just about the dive and you're right about that, but it's about specific to what he said. And we just called it out a couple of times this past week. As soon as you start seeing guys on the floor getting close together, you know a dive is about to happen where everyone's standing next to each other, arms around each other, like it's a chorus line, like the Rockettes, and someone dives on top of everyone, wipes Hello, everyone Hello, my out. baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Now I pay attention when that happens because I'm always amazed how many times a guy jumps over onto the group of people, the quail, as Jim Ross would call it, and he actually lands directly on top of the guy on his own team. Yeah, who's got, to be quite honest, his partner probably has the most vested interest in him not paralyzing himself, so he's going to get under there real good, but it's just ridiculous, and it, it, this is a good example of why I knew right from the start, I want to be anywhere around this fucking dumpster fire or have anything involved in it, because anybody that's going to tell these guys stuff that limits them to logic 
and the, or the rules of wrestling or the parameters of the endeavor that they're in and requires them to have talent for it to do it the right way rather than just going out there and doing the shit they want to do, they're not going to listen to. And so when you, and I get, I feel for JR, we've mentioned in, in the past, you can hear sometimes when he verbally eye rolls because he's having to call something that's the fucking modern day equivalent of May Young giving birth to a hand. What do you fucking say, right? When some of this shit in the ring, it's fucking stupid. And, or he tries to lay out sometimes when things are going on that's just a mess. But he's got to be frustrated, and obviously nobody's going to listen because if you take, if you take away anything that is stupid looking, phony looking, choreographed, just sloppy work, just the inexperience, just the stuff that you know. As everybody says, well, Jr. has much to teach us. Well, if you took all the things he has, or anybody else competent has to teach people and applied them you would have to get rid of half their roster because half their roster such as mr cutlet was signed specifically to do this shit that their little nucleus enjoys the little nucleus besides cody that has the ear of the money mark that is financing this thing because twinkle toes mcfinger bang and fucking pockets whatever it's just it's it's a social club on national television rather than a serious effort to change professional wrestling for the better. I'll bet you that once some of these veteran guys like Jim Ross or Tully Blanchard, maybe even Jake, any of these guys who've been brought in, once they start leaving, the truth's going to start coming out that, yeah, we sat down, we tried to talk to these guys. They don't want to hear. They'll say MJF, listen to us. I guarantee they'll say that, but they'll say all these other guys, we talked to them and, they don't want to hear it. And that's the thing. There's never really been a time in wrestling before where the guys who are hired, who are in many cases, younger guys simply do not want to hear anything that do anyone you know from why a different that generation. Is? Why do, why do I think that is? Or why do what was I, I can tell you exactly why it is because until the day that the territories died out, if any young talent had had the attitude or the uh the it refused to listen or acknowledge what was going on or whatever they would have either one or all of these either had to slap shit slapped out of them shit kicked out of them fired or uh, all three and and if they had then gone to if it'd been one of the boys or some of the boys in the locker room that did it and they'd have gone to the fucking booker or the promoter and said, hey, so-and-so slapped the shit out of me, or so-and-so kicked my ass, or whatever the fuck. That that's the would have been the people that would have fired him for it. Yeah, because you deserved it, you fucking stupid fuck. What do you think? You're going to fuck the business up around here? Get the fuck out of here. You got in the business, and the veterans told you how the business worked, and you learned from that. And the way that you changed the business was by drawing more money than they had without sacrificing the concept of the business and then you became a bigger star doing what the business was not changing it excelling at it fucking idiots anyway well you know if brandon cutler is this upset that he's willing to go on twitter on behalf of we assume on behalf of his bosses his friends and I guess fire back at Jim Ross. If he's this upset, maybe he should get off social media and maybe he should speak to a therapist. Well, you know, you are exactly right. And I know the people that he can talk to. I don't know if actually, if even better help will talk to Brandon Cutlett. They do have some standards. But folks, in all honesty and in all seriousness, if you need somebody to talk to, especially during the days of the pandemic, if you not only now don't have access to in-person service like this in your area, but also you don't want to avail yourself of it because that means going out amongst the people, amongst the COVID. Now you can get professional, licensed therapy, online professional counseling done securely with the folks at BetterHelp. And it's available worldwide, no matter where you live, what country or what state. 
You can log into your account anytime, send messages to your counselors. You get to pick the counselors and change them if you want to find the right fit. They'll work with you. And you can go to BetterHelp.com and read the testimonials that are posted daily. We've read a bunch of them from the Cult of Cornette listeners here about how they've helped them with their services. You can read testimonials from all over the world at BetterHelp.com and at BetterHelp.com slash drive. You can get 10% off your first month's services. A million people, over 1 million people even, that's a bigger number than a million, are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional with BetterHelp, and you can too. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash drive, 10% off the first month. I got to think we ought to get JR a lifetime membership because now that I'm thinking about this, I know I know what he's feeling because Tony, it doesn't bother Tony. Tony was away from the wrestling business for 18 years. He He's just he's just amazed at all these guys diving and he laughs and he chuckles because he's like, well, I don't know what's going on here. Nobody else does either. But wow. But but for a guy who has been in every major company and at a high level for so long, Jr. sitting there, why it's like it would be like me in a room full of Russo's at the TNA production meeting, or it would, it would be like Albert Einstein with the third grade math class. It would just, so I think maybe we get Jr. a lifetime subscription to better help because that way he could have somebody to talk to daily when he has to deal with these people is like, my God, he's playing chess and they're, and they're trying to figure out how to eat the checkers. Better help. Ha <laughs> ha!